Today is May 17th, which means here in the Civil Net Studio and of course in Norway, we are celebrating, or they are celebrating, Norwegian Constitution Day. So I'm joined by Norwegian Honorary Consul Tim Strait. Tim, it's a celebration in Norway, but here in Armenia, there are no Norwegians. How it's do you, me. yeah, it's you. It's me. Yeah. How do you celebrate this exactly? Um, obviously, I've gotten very fancy clothes on today. No, and uh, typically in Norway, it is a very fancy day. Uh, each region of Norway has its national costume, each having its own jewelry, the, the embroidery, the sewing, the cut, the colors, and so forth and so on, much like the Armenian tradition of national costume. So that's one of the many connections between Armenia and Norway. Today, in Armenia, I don't have that costume on, so what I'm doing is interviews like this to say a little bit about what Armenia and Norway have in common a little bit about what Norway can contribute to Armenia and what Armenia can contribute to Norway. And let's talk about that. You've been the honorary consul for 12 years. Diplomatic official relations between the two countries is about 19 years since 1993. Um, but let's talk about the present, the right now. What can Armenia learn from Norway right now as it tackles problems it's facing right now? I, I think the most important and timely issue is, is the now infamous firebomb of the DIY club here in Yerevan. Um, there were uh, sexual minorities, uh, homosexuals, lesbians that, that frequented in that place. There were other people that frequented in that place. There were artists, there are just liberal people. It was a liberal place. Um, the fact that somebody thinking that it serves the Armenian cause to firebomb that place, to protect the Armenian identity, to firebomb a place like that, is something that I could not disagree more with. Why? And please apply that to a Norwe Norwegian sense of society. We have national minorities. We have the Samis in, in the north of Norway. They have their own Congress. The homosexuals in Norway, they legally can marry in Norway. We have all kinds of minorities in the country. We respect them. We work with them. We actually enjoy, I mean, we welcome them. They're part of the fabric of the Norwegian society. So I don't feel that it assists the Norwegian identity or the Armenian identity to have a prejudice against its own minorities. So I think it's very important that, that one rejoices in, in, in one's minorities and learns how to work with them and, and treat everyone equally in, in, the, in the society. That's how you establish a positive national image and positive national self-image and how you promote your own culture abroad, your language, your culture, your national costumes, whatever. Yeah, uh, almost a year ago, about 10 months ago, a Norwegian citizen of Norwegian descent um, killed more than 70 of his own people, so to speak, uh, which is exactly what you're saying shouldn't happen, which is going against, you know, uh, that's, that's a country's own people taking out on some of its own people. Um, how then can you sit here and say that Armenia should learn from Norway? H how? Yeah. Um, that act of terrorism, and it was an act of terrorism, even though it was a white, uh, blonde-haired, blue-eyed Norwegian who did it, uh, he killed 77 individuals in a bomb and the shooting incident out on Utøya. Um, look at the response that Norway has had. Even the day after that act of terrorism in Norway, the Prime Minister of the country and the Minister of Justice stood up on television and they said, this is not going to make our society more closed. It's going to make it more open. And that's exactly what they have aimed at during the, the almost a year since that incident. I personally am going down to Goris to, to open a garden in front of a school, in, in front of school number three in Goris, and I'm going to say the same thing, that acts of terrorism like this should not lead to more closed, uh, being more closed, it should not lead to more nationalism, ultra-nationalism, it should lead to more openness and accepted, uh, acceptedness. If a person feels accepted in his society, he won't do things like that. So we need to look at what created a person like yeah. that. I don't know if we're making too many comparisons, so if I'm off base, that's fine. But in the case of a year ago, specifically in the shooting, most of the victims, the way I understand it, uh, were not minorities. They were, you know, Norwegian, of Norwegian descent. I don't know exactly how to phrase that. Um, so maybe the comparison isn't directly one-to-one, -one because in this case, the victims, or the targeted people, so to speak, in the DIY thing, are what we, we would consider, not necessarily minorities, but people a little bit outside of the mainstream. I can't think of a better way to phrase it. Yeah, it, 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 it is, both of the events are connected in a way that they're an expression of disapproval for what those people stand for, right. right? In the case of DIY, it's the artists, it's the freakers, it's the homosexuals, it's whatever type of person that was. In Norway, that man, that individual man, 
was, was against the openness of the Armenian, uh, the Norwegian society. He was against um, um, Muslim, uh, more Muslims coming to Norway. He was against integration of other cultures, other religions, other races in, in, into Norwegian society. And, and so in, in a way, it's exactly the same thing. It's at different stages along the path, but it's exactly the same issue. Do we welcome our, our minorities? Do we welcome our divi diversity in our country? Or do we see it as, as a threat to our national identity? Norway has clearly said, we don't approve of what this man did. The people in the hundreds of thousands marched against what that man did. In Armenia, we've had muted reaction. Right, right. To fill in the audience a little bit, the DIY bombing was about 10 days ago, uh, and there has not been any form of an, official, of an official condemnation or anything like that. In fact, in some people's mind, quite the opposite. So I'll leave it open. Um, hmm. Your thoughts on governmental leadership reactions so far in the wake of that situation? I think, I think it would have been appropriate if the government had come out with a public condemnation. We cannot tolerate this. There's not been any mention of the threat this was to the people in the apartments above and beside, uh, besides what that was, just let alone the bombing of the place itself. So, so I think it is entirely in its place to, to uh, apologize publicly for, uh, for saying we don't accept this in our society. We have ambitions of being European. We have ambitions of someday down the road perhaps joining the EU and so forth and so on. A country that allows bombing of, of, of something like that and does not condemn it openly and clearly, immediately, is not, in my view, uh, a candidate for European membership. Sure. Uh, there's been a very, I'll say minor in comparison to a bombing, but there was a second thing that was done a couple days ago involving graffiti. Um, you think if a government comes out over its made more clear that this is not an accepted thing from the highest people, mm -hmm. something like that doesn't happen or whatever else might in the future might happen? I think it will, will dampen the, 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 the sense of we can do whatever we want among this group. We have ultra-nationalists in Norway. Mm -hmm. We have swastikas painted on buildings in Norway. We have a lot of the same thing as what we're seeing, but what is immediately done is a public condemnation. It's kept under control without denying those individuals their, their liberty to think like that, but through education and public condemnation, keeping it under control so that every citizen of the country can live in peace the lifestyle that they choose. So if we could, let's finish maybe with some positives and what the actual interaction is between the two governments at this point. Um, you've been involved for 12 years. What do you see right now going on between Armenia's government and Norway's government? Uh, the relations are very good. They're very warm. Uh, we recently had the foreign minister here. The, it's, it's an ongoing, very positive relationship. In terms of programs and projects, investments made in, in Armenia, Norway has a, every year, we do pro uh, projects within human rights, environment, uh, the empowerment of women, uh, um, good governance, uh, a range of issues. Um, what I'd like to see more of is investment in the, in the business sphere. I'd like to see more trade between Norway and, and Armenia. Armenia produces some very good products and we need to raise awareness in Norway. I've been working at that for years and years uh, in order to create a, a flow of business between the two countries. That, that's my own personal wish and I, think, I believe it is the government's wish as well. Without getting too deep or spending too much time on this topic, um, do you think there's one thing in particular that's holding that back? Is there one I mean, is it fear on Norwegian government side? Is it, it, if there was one thing that you could fix or make this all happen, what would it be? It, it, it's awareness. I think it's awareness of what is possible in Armenia. And, and yes, there's uh, all kinds of discussions about corruption and things like that. But if you know what you're doing and if you're devoted to your business, you're focused on your business, you know what your rights are. It is possible to do business here. And so, so I, think, I think we need to raise, raise awareness of how hardworking, intelligent, educated, Armenians are, and we can do excellent outsourcing companies here. You can do excellent export of cognac and jewelry and all those classic things. Uh, I think there's a lot more that can be produced here, mostly with the Armenian mind, which is a very good asset for the country. And this is definitely a, a much longer topic for another day and something you and I have talked about quite a bit. Tim Strait, Norwegian Honorary Consul, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, today is Norwegian Constitution Day, and we use that opportunity to talk about Norway a little bit and a little history, but mostly what the relationship is between the two countries and specifically focusing on current events going on right now. Thank you.